We are here in the context of the seventh conference of the Florence School of Regulation on regulating infrastructures. And we have the pleasure to have Pier Paolo Settembri. He's the advisor to the Director General of DG Move, Director General Move in, in the Commission. Thanks so much for being with us and for having attended this conference. A uh, few questions first. How do you see the big challenges of the transport area? Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. It's been a, a terrific experience to, uh, to be here. I think the challenge for, for transport are uh, the challenges that are in the real world and then they translate into regulatory uh, challenges. More people, uh, more people that want to move. At the same time, the need to cut uh, emissions, shrinking uh, uh, public resources for uh, infrastructure investments, and all these lead to a more complex uh, uh, regulatory uh, decisions to make. On the other hand, there are new opportunities. Digitalization is one of them, automation, also alternative fuels that will change altogether uh, transport much more in the next uh, few years compared to the last uh, mm -hmm. uh, 50 years. So these are the challenges that uh, we are confronted with on the one hand the difficult problems, on the other hand the new opportunities and the, in the, the choice to be made are about uh, having an enabling framework that doesn't pick a winner, that doesn't pick mm -hmm. a technology, that still uh, avoids new uh, inequalities and gives access to many people and also enables new schemes like uh, sharing schemes um, mm -hmm. that uh, will, uh, will, will enable to a better use of, uh, of resources. So digitalization is very much part of this. It favors this evolution, but there may also be problems in digitalization. So how do you see the possible regulation of digitalization, or should we even? Yes. Well, as such, digitalization is a fact. Uh, so it's, uh, it's there, it's a big opportunity, and, uh, and I think it would be foolish not to uh, seize it, also because all, all, uh, all other players uh, are, are using it. So on the one hand, digitalization uh, enables uh, a, a better management of complex phenomena, like traffic congestion, uh, to gain new efficiency. It uh, enables uh, uh, value extraction from, uh, from data, so data are a new source of uh, uh, revenue, of information and something that can be can be monetized and then they enable uh, sharing schemes that were unthinkable uh, before now owning a car uh, can be secondary to the possibility of having a, a, a transport mean to go from uh, from A to B. And also you don't have to think too much how you will get from A to B if you know that you have tools that will tell you at the moment when you need them uh, where to go and where to find, how long it will take, how much you will pay. Mm -hmm. So digitalization has, uh, has changed uh, a lot the landscape. We need to make sure that uh, this is done uh, within certain limits, uh, data handling is, is one of them, but also that this does not create new uh, inequalities. We see a lot of uh, new mm -hmm. interesting schemes in the center of cities. We see them less uh, in the periphery, and we need to make sure that everybody benefits uh, from these innovations. Now, we, in this conference, we have talked a lot about digital platforms. Yes. And many of these platforms are very powerful, not European. Uh, is there any need to, to tackle these platforms somehow? Well, in, online platforms uh, have changed many uh, markets, uh, um, mostly for the better. Uh, consumers have had access to more choices at the more affordable uh, prices. We have certain tools that are uh, at the European uh, level uh, capable of uh, addressing uh, some of the challenges that these online platforms uh, uh, bring about. One of them is competition policy. We also have a very robust uh, uh, consumer protection law. We also have uh, safety rules and, uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and a whole uh, framework of legislation mm -hmm. that is applicable uh, to them. Uh, their practices have, in a way, expose certain gaps and regulatory action may be needed uh, targeted to address uh, this, mm -hmm. uh, um, these practices. We, we, we identified one when we put forward a proposal as the European Commission in, uh, in April uh, that um, uh, fosters uh, transparency uh, and fairness uh, in the dealings between online platforms and business using them as, uh, as intermediaries. And this has to do with the way 
companies are rated, uh, in the way mm -hmm. companies can mm -hmm. uh, have access to redress uh, mechanisms in terms, for example, of uh, uh, changing terms uh, of, uh, of service mm -hmm. and, uh, and so forth. So they are, uh, by and large, uh, uh, a great uh, positive uh, innovation. They bring about uh, certain specific challenges. Some of them can be tackled to existing tools. Some of them mm -hmm. do require new tools, and some probably re will require new tools as we see uh, the evolution uh, um, downstream. Uh, there is uh, a decision to set up an observatory at the European level mm -hmm. to monitor developments uh, in, the, in the online platform uh, economy and I think this is the best uh, guarantee that uh, these evolutions will be duly uh, monitored and then uh, also um, uh, assessed uh, against possible uh, further regulatory action. So we are here in the context of the Florence School of Regulation you know and we do research on these issues and you know, my question to you would be, what, what would you expect from us uh, in terms of research areas, uh, actions, dealings particularly, particularly mm. with these new challenges? <coughs> well, first and foremost, I think uh, doing more of these events uh, will, be, will be key because uh, occasions to bring together uh, academics and decision mm. makers are very valuable for, uh, for both categories. Uh, I would add uh, two things. One is to uh, engage also with online platforms themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think they have a, a wealth of data. Uh, they also have the powerful um, the means to spread their own narrative about things and I think it's good to, to, to engage with them, to talk to them, to see if we speak a common language, also to harness mm -hmm. the, the, the data they have and to have a, a meaningful mm -hmm. uh, debate. Uh, the other recommendation is to engage with the EU decision making. There are many opportunities to influence it uh, through comments to the impact assessments to the proposals uh, uh, and even just to, 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 to talk to the Commission and mm -hmm. other stakeholders with your studies, your evidence. I think we practice certainly in DG Move, but also more widely an open door uh, policy. We don't have all the solutions, we don't even know all the problems, so we're always keen to, to, to learn more from, uh, from people that are experts in their field. Thanks, and you know, we have already established a long lasting co uh, collaboration with DG Move, and we hope to continue that also into the digital world. Absolutely. So, Let's keep it thank that you. Way. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.